It's a kind of cool day. I'm in pajamas already, but I am making dinner. I am making a lemon, what is this? A white wine lemon garlic chicken with some angel hair pasta. Let me show you all the ingredients. Here's what I plan to use. I have a pound of diced chicken breast. I have some zucchini powder that I made not too long ago that I think I'm going to add a little bit to the sauce. I have some canned green beans, and then I have the last of the sliced carrots that are in the can from the store. I don't think it really goes with this meal so much, but I'm going to use them up anyways. And then I have the angel hair pasta. I don't love pasta that's like a long noodle. And the reason is I can't master it in the air fryer. No, not in the air fryer. The reason I, <laughs> oh goodness. The reason I don't like this kind of pasta very much is because I just am not good at cooking it in the Instapot and that is how I cook all of my pasta. So I've got a pot of water on to boil and I will be cooking this all up as soon as this pot comes to that boil. This pan is a bit overkill but the other one's dirty and I'm not in the mood to wash it so I'm just going to add a little bit of oil in there and then I'm going to add the chicken which I just defrosted in the microwave and so it got a little bit almost cooked in some areas. I actually need to turn this on first. We'll let that oil heat up a little bit. In the meantime, we can open up our green beans and our, not our corn. In my video, I called carrots corn every single time I mentioned them, which was quite funny. So let's see here. Whoa. Our water is almost boiling, so it's about time to get the pasta in. I think I'm going to have enough time to get the chicken in, train the vegetables, and then we'll be good. I probably should let that go a little longer. I'm going to add just some salt and pepper. I'm hoping that that packet will be enough for flavor. I think I'm also going to add a little bit of chicken stock or turkey stock just because I have it in the fridge. Let me grab that. I'm not necessarily trying to thin out the sauce, but I'm just trying to use some things up. I figure with a little bit of the zucchini powder, the pork sauce, and the lemon garlic sauce, we'll be good. I'm trying to decide how much to use. I have half of this package left. Try to just cook it all. I guess I'll cook all of it, and whatever I don't use here, I'll use for something else. I definitely could have let those go a little longer, but patience is not my strongest quality. The noodles are just about done. I don't even know if you can hear me over this, but I've gotten a nice color on the chicken. And I'm going to add in our vegetables. I'm actually going to lower the volume quite a bit. The volume. This is not the volume. I'm lowering the heat quite a bit just to add them in. And then I'll raise the heat again. Can you tell it's loud? I can't blow that volume. And then I'm also going to add... Well, no, I'm going to wait. Change my mind. I'm going to first get these a little bit. Saute, turn that back up. This pasta looks done. I'm going to drain it, but I'm not going to use a colander because I think it's full. So I'm actually just going to, little by little, get it in here. And I'm going to definitely use quite a bit of this for today's meal, so I'll have to get it back out. Oh, one's a goner.
All right, let's add in the pork broth that is currently gelatinous. And then I want to add in a little of the zucchini powder. Not all of it. And then the last thing to add in before the noodles is this sauce. Nothing too fancy today. I feel like perhaps I should taste the sauce and just make sure that I don't need to like add anything to it. Um, that needs garlic. Well, wait. It needs something. Maybe it's just salt. Because I was able to just taste a lot of garlic. Yeah, I think I'm going to put a decent amount of salt because I'm going to put the pasta in. Which I think I can do right now. Ooh, that got hot. Goodness. I'm going to turn that down again. Okay, let's see how this goes. Maybe that'll be enough pasta. Yeah, I feel like that is probably good for the pasta. And then this pasta I can let cool down and stick in the fridge. Let's give this a taste test. Let's grab a little piece of chicken and maybe a noodle. I'm struggling to grab it. Okay. Ah! <laughs> well, the chicken was good. That's the part that I got. The other part fell on the ground. So I'm going to try the noodles real quick. Struggling to get them on this little tiny fork. I'm glad I didn't put any more noodles in here. I feel like the sauce wouldn't have been enough. It's mild compared to a different sauce that I've had, so that's good, because the other one was a little too strong. So let me show you this, and then I am going to dish them up to eat. And that is dinner. Good morning. It is the next morning. I made that dinner last night and now I am working on some sourdough. Yesterday I fed my sourdough starter. It's been about two months since I've cooked with sourdough or baked with sourdough. And what I did about a month ago was I took my starter out, I fed it, I let it come back down and then I put it back in the fridge. And then yesterday when I took it out, that meant I had triple what I usually store and I fed all of it. So I currently have about 275 grams in this bowl which is way too much for me. I am going to start though by putting some into a jar just so I don't forget because I wanna make sure, whoa, I want to make sure that I have some backup because if I used all the starter, that would be a really sad day. So I usually like to do somewhere around 50 grams and I don't usually do it this way. So this is posing to be a little messier than I was hoping for. Okay, we're at 57 grams, I'll take it. That's fine with me. I'm going to put, I'm actually going to put 56 written on here because once I like wipe off all the extra that got spilled around it, it'll be 56. Now we're back to all of this stuff. So we gotta figure out what we're making. And so I'm going to be making three loaves today. I'm going to make them all inclusion loaves, which I'm super excited about. I'm going to start by doing two of them together because they're just going to be plain loaves. 
with inclusions and then I'll do one separate because I'm going to use this onion jam. We're still doing pantry challenge. I'm trying to use up all the things. So I'm gonna do onion jam in one. I'm gonna do another one that has sun-dried tomatoes, basil, and mozzarella. And that one's going to be using up the sun-dried tomatoes from the fridge. And then the last one will be like a jalapeno popper. And so that'll use up some of the hot peppers from the garden last year and it'll be fantastic. So I usually like to do um, 350 grams of water, 500 grams of flour to 50 grams of starter and then we'll add a little bit of salt later. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm probably going to have to figure out what to do with the rest of the starter. Cause I think I'm gonna have probably a bunch still. And so we're at seven grams now. Whoa. This is not, I usually just pour it out of the container and that is not what's happening today. Okay, we're at 65. I'm trying to go to 100 because I'm doubling this recipe and then I'll split it when it's time to make the loaves. Okay, there we go. We're at 107. I think that'll be just fine. I know I have plenty here for something else too. Wait. It now says 121, so maybe I'll take a little bit out. You could do up to 200 grams here. So a lot of places, oops, put a little more in. A lot of times that's what's done, but I like to do a lower amount just because the way that everything seems to rise here seems to just not need as much. So we're at 102, I'm gonna clear that out. I need 750 grams of water. This water is like lukewarm, maybe a little warmer, but not hot. 500, 600, and 700. Now let me grab my Danish dough whisk because I haven't grabbed it yet, but this thing is my absolute favorite. I don't like mixing without this. So if you don't have one of these and you're doing this, like see if you can find one or buy one online if you can. It is so helpful. And then we're gonna add it back on the scale and tear it out and we're going to add a thousand whoops, that didn't tear it there we go a thousand grams of flour we're at 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 951 oh really we're at 975 <laughs> There's more flour where that came from. I hope this doesn't overflow out of the bowl. Bowl, not ball. And thousand and nine. Good enough. This is unbleached flour. I've used bleached flour before though too. I'm not using bread flour because I don't have bread flour. And then the water is just half water. So what I'm gonna do here is just mix this until it's combined and then we'll set it on the counter for about a half hour or so and then I'll start doing some stretch and folds. Same thing with the other one, we're just mixing them up right now. I'm trying to figure out how would I know how much I have in that bowl. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm going to transfer all of that into here to see how much I have and then I'll probably be using both of these anyways to make Something. I'm probably gonna have to make more than just what I was thinking. I'm also potentially, I'm thinking of doing a cinnamon roll. I just like went around that so many times before actually saying it. I'm thinking about making a cinnamon roll, but not cinnamon. I'm gonna do, I think, blueberry filling because I have blueberry pie filling. Um, so blueberry pie filling with like a cream cheese frosting I think would be delicious. Well, I gotta take this off. It looks like we have about 200 grams. Yeah, so that's 213 grams. So what I need to do is figure out how to divvy this up between cinnamon rolls and then the last loaf of bread. The blueberry rolls call for 100 grams of starter and I have 215, I just got it on my hand. So the good news about sourdough is it's super forgiving. So I am going to put probably like 100 grams into this bowl for the bread because you could do 50 or 100 grams and then leave the rest, which will be approximately 100 grams in here. All right, 99. 
So I probably won't need 350 grams of water. Also, I am going to add this whole jar of onion jam. So I need to watch, I probably need a lot less water than what I typically would. So let's see here. How much do I want to do? Last time I did do the full amount of water and it was a tad too much. So I don't want to do that again. Um, maybe I'll do, hmm, because there was half water in the starter. So that was like an extra 25 grams compared to normal plus all the liquid in there. Maybe I'll do 275 grams. So let's see, we are at zero. So we're gonna do 275, I think. We're gonna to want to do 250. Oh, 275, I think. We're at 237. We're at 257. 268, 271, 73, and 277. Close enough. Grab this guy, put the lid on this one. Just setting it there, and we'll mix this up. And this time we'll only do 500 grams of flour. Okay, put this back on there and we'll tear it again. We're going for 500. We are just crossing 100, 200. Whoa, 431. Hi <laughs> Milo, stay over there please. 514. Can you get off the counter? 499. Close enough. Yeah, it stinks, huh? It's fermented. Thank you for going away. This is a much better consistency than the last time I did this. Last time it was so wet, it was hard to do anything with. The more wet a dough is, which is the lower the, not lower, the higher the hydration, the harder it is to work with. All right, I think we're just about mixed here. Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, this one needs 200 grams of milk and I'm going to use milk powder. So I'm gonna see where this starts us and see how much 200 grams is. It's about at one and a half cups. All right, we are at 200 on the dot, and we're now, it's always about three quarters of a cup of water, which then tells me how much I need here. So probably like a quarter of a cup of milk powder. I usually don't convert from one to the other. I usually just stick with one unit of measure. I need 70 grams of sugar. Something tells me this might, no, this is definitely, oh, we'll see. We'll see if it's enough. Oh yeah, it is. Oh no! 85 grams. We do not want that. I think it's all dissolved in there. Well, you know how that goes. We just add a little bit more of everything else. One egg. Did I get it? Yep. Conveniently, I have one egg left. Five grams of salt, which I think is right behind me. There it is. We're at 141, so we're going to 146. I don't want to put too much salt in. I feel like that'd just be gross. Oh, seven. Seven's fine. We're going to go a little high on everything. And then for flour, it's at 430 grams. I think I'm going to go 450 just because of that extra sugar. That's a lot of extra sugar, but that's okay. Oops, maybe let's tear it first. We are at 160, we're at 377, 416, 425, 
429. It's always at this point that I'm trying to just get a little bit in and then a lot will go in. 456. Okay. So we're close to following the recipe. I also need eight tablespoons of butter, which is this full stick, but it needs to be softened. So I'm going to soften it, get it in here, and then we will mix it in the mixer. Alrighty, I'm going to call that good. It looks super nice and mixed. I just need to now let it sit out for about an hour with the rest of them, and then we will come through. This one won't get stretch and folded. They'll just get to rise for a little bit. The other ones will stretch and fold. Here's how I remember that I need to put the salt in. I just put the salt right on top. So let's add salt to both of these. This one needs a lot more. I am going to get my hand wet, and then we'll do the stretch and folds. If you don't get your hand wet, It'll just stick to you. And I'm going to start with the regular one because I don't want the onion flavor transferring over here. Although these are all savory breads that I'm making, so it would be fine. There's that one, get my hand wet again, we'll do the other one. This dough is not as wet, so that's okay. I'm going to do a few more stretch and folds and I'll let it sit for a while and then we'll be back to shape it. I am now ready to get all of the inclusions inside of the dough. So I'm going to start by tipping out the plain dough and hope I don't get it on my shirt. I grabbed out three different things to proof in. I have one banneton and two bowls. My favorite bowl to proof in is the one behind me that has the onion jam bread in it. And I just don't know if I'm gonna to get to cleaning that in time to put the onion jam bread back in. So we're going with some other bowls. And I'm starting with these ones because it won't make the counter onion flavored because I don't want the onion flavor mixing. So I need to cut this in half. And this is actually quite sticky of a dough. I probably should have put some flour down, but every time I do that, I always regret it. So I've got rice flour here, woo! And while I grab some rice flour out, I'm going to put some just lined right into this bowl. And I've just got a tea cloth on. And then I am gonna add just a little bit, even though I always regret it. And maybe the same thing here, just get this other one out of the way. Okay, let's spread this out. Woo. Oh, I forgot to grab the basil. That's okay. We're gonna stretch it out as much as we can. And I'll grab the basil. Oh, there's not much. That's okay. We'll work with what we got in there. Oh, it smells so good. All right, I think that's good. I'm going to add some mozzarella cheese. hoping these turn out fantastic. I'm not going to bake them up until tomorrow. I'm just going to let them rise on the counter for a few hours and I'll stick them in the fridge overnight. I have found I really like baking straight from the fridge. I do not like baking 
straight from the counter if it needs to be shaped into a loaf because it just doesn't stay. So then I will add these tomatoes. Oh, that's a lot in that area. This all smells so good. I do not like hot peppers though, so the next one is not gonna be my type of a deal, but other people like it. <laughs> all right, I need to wash my hand off and then we'll roll it up. But really, what am I gonna do with this much cheese? So put that on there. And now I want to take one side and fold it over. Then we'll take another side and fold it over. Whoop, broke it, that's okay. Pull this side in a little more. And then we're just going to roll it. Roll, roll, roll. And then I need to, whoa, add the tightness. So I'm just building tension by pushing the dough. Whoop. And we're losing all the good parts. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Inclusions aren't my uh, finest skill. We're gonna call that good enough, I think, because uh, I don't wanna keep losing everything out of it. The whole dough is now covered in bread flour, whole dough, whole loaf. So I'm just going to cover the top of it and then this will go on the counter for a while and then it'll go in the fridge. One more to go of this kind. And I think I'm okay with that little bit down there. Maybe I won't spread it as wide as I usually do for the non-inclusion loaves. That way there's some more, whoa, some more like dough down here. Okay, let's add the cheese. That's a lot of cheese. That's okay. and the jalapenos. There's some serranos in here too. It's just whatever came out of the garden. And then I just wanna add some cream cheese dollops. I thought about cubing up some cream cheese and sprinkling it on top and I figured that would just be too much work. So this is the way I've decided. All right, I'm going to dust the inside of this bowl with rice flour and then we are ready to roll this up. And hopefully this time it doesn't explode as bad out. Let's see here. Cool. Try to build some tension without exploding everything out of it. There's so much air bubble in the dough. Like let all the air out and pinch it back together, hopefully. I'm like, what if I just twist it this way? All I'm trying to do is build tension one way or another, and I'm also trying to not lose all the insides. 
I've got to say this is quite a complicated thing to do here. I'm going to try to just do some patchwork. Anyways, that's as good as it's going to get. Oh gosh. I clearly need more practice with that. Last up is the onion bread and I'm going to do it in this Bannerton basket and hopefully I can get it into the right type of a shape here. I'm not very good at getting that log shape. Okay, this one should be a little easier since it doesn't need any inclusions. I love that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's just try to do a little braid deal. And I need that to somehow fit in there. So what is the best way to do that? I'm tempted to like roll it and just try to make it thicker as I'm rolling. Yeah, that's working. Roll it and squish it. Now I just wanna make the edges a little prettier. The reason that I wanted this in the loaf style is because I feel like grilled cheese works better in a loaf style. That's all. Okay, they're all done. So in a few hours, I'll stick them in the fridge and then tomorrow we're going to bake them up. Good morning. It is Easter Sunday. I am getting these blueberry rolls ready. I'm just spraying the pan and then I'm going to get a piece of dental floss out and ready because that's what I really like to cut cinnamon rolls with and if I don't get it ready now it'll be really hard to get out. Put that right there. These need to rise for about two hours and so I'm going to do them first. I do have the oven preheating to 450. You know, hmm. This dough is cold because I put it in the fridge overnight. I have the oven preheating so I can get the bread going. I'm not sure these are going to roll out. They feel very sticky. I might need to grab, let me grab the mat to put them on. It might just be because it's cold, but it does feel like it's not really staying together at all. The dough, like there's some dough. So I wonder if it was too wet. Or it might just be too cold right now. Hmm. This dough, I think, is going to be too sticky for this. Okay, so we can deal with this. We are not going to be making cinnamon rolls. We are going to be making something else. Let me think for a second. Morning, my low. Oh, ow, hot. I think I'm just going to do like a cinnamon pop-up bread. So I'll just do like little bits and pieces and then we'll know for next time that that bread dough we need to add a lot more flour, which I thought so. I feel like every time I make a brioche bread, it doesn't call for enough flour. That's 
All right. It'll taste just the same, even if it looks a little different. So do I want to, oh gosh. I kinda wanna spray my hand and push that down. But my other hand, But we definitely don't need the dental floss anymore. So I put like little finger pokes in the dough. I figured kind of like how you would focaccia with the oven's hot. I am going to put some pie filling all over it. You're adapting and overcoming. I'm going to put the whole jar, that might be a lot, but like what else am I gonna do with it? So we're going for it. Now I need to figure out exactly what I'm gonna do here. Am I going to try to just make this a long sheet to go over it or, gosh, it's so sticky. <laughs> or do I want to, yeah, this is working actually. So let's see if I can get it the right size. I was originally thinking of just like doing drops of dough. I actually think that's probably what I'm still gonna do. Hey, it's rustic, but it's cute. Going to sit for about two hours and we're going to get to scoring the bread. All right, hopefully we have better luck with this. I am going to start scoring the loaves and I'm not very good at scoring them, but we can make do. <laughs> Gosh, I'm not very good at any of it, but it all tastes good, so that's good. Let's just tip out the dough. Move it a little into here. And then I gotta figure out what I wanna do. I think since today's Easter, I mean, I usually don't do like anything. I think I'm going to try to do like an egg. Oh, whoa, that just came out of there. Maybe we'll go this way. Should I make an Easter egg in it? Not a very good looking egg, but that's okay. I'm making it pretty deep. And I think I'll go across and maybe a zigzag. Ooh, this is not in there right. I gotta figure out how to get that in there. Oh, I just have to twist it. And maybe a squiggle. And then maybe another straight. All right, let's grab the Dutch oven out. I've got two Dutch ovens in the oven right now. Okay, there's one. That first one was the sun-dried tomato. This one is the jalapeno cheddar. Maybe here we'll do like a sun. Okay. We're making a mess. Let's get this guy in the oven. I need to set the timer and then we'll see them when they're done. I'm going to cook them for a while with the lid on and then a while with the lid off. 
Okay, it's been 20 minutes. I'm going to take the lids off and we'll see how these look. Oh, I might not want to do it that way. Pull this guy out. I don't know, but I found oh, these without them. Cool. Okay, it's coming along. What's the best way to do this one? Oh, I think I need to pull it out. Goodness. We'll figure this out. I've never eaten made bread in this pot before. Watch out, Milo. Okay, take the lid off. This one's a little harder to get the lid off because it doesn't have a, just a knob to grab. All right. Well, they're doing something. Put that back in. Another 10 to 20 minutes. These have taken so much longer than usual to cook. I think it's because of the inclusions adding liquid to it. But that's been really interesting. Also very interesting how this Dutch oven created a loaf. Get this out of here. It was just browning up very oddly. All right, here's the last one. And let's see, do we think we can get a bunny on it? <laughs> That's a bit much for me. These all came out and clearly the pictures are not exactly what I expected them to be, but here they are. And then I am going to get this into the oven for about a half hour. It's risen for about two hours now. The cinnamon rolls that aren't cinnamon rolls at all at this point are now out of the oven and cooled off. I did whip up a little bit of icing. This is just some softened cream cheese, softened butter, a cup of powdered sugar, and then a little bit of milk, like a tablespoon of milk. I'm going to get this on the top and then i think we're just about ready i think all of the loaves will be ready to slice up soon they're just cooling off these look so good mm. <laughs> what? Look at these. No, they look awesome. <laughs> they they don't look like cinnamon rolls, but they still look good. All right, let's cut into these and see how good the crumb is. Where's the bread knife? Found it. This is the tomato loaf, cutting diagonally through the Easter egg. The, only kind of turned out. This smells delicious. Perfect. Next up, we'll cut the onion one. This was the last one out of the oven and it took a very long time to cook all the way through the inside. Oh yeah. And last up is the jalapeno cheddar. Go right through the sun. Ooh. All right, I'm going to get these cut into slices and then that's all we got that i'm going to wait to dive into even though it looks fantastic right now i bet it's going to be amazing i will let you know though if it doesn't end up being amazing but i imagine it'll be amazing if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new here and you haven't yet please subscribe i'd love to see you 
and I will pop up a few videos on the end screen if you'd like to stick around. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hmm. Tomato one. Delicious.